Well, folks, it's finally the day that we kick out the pedo communists and hopefully correct the course of this country. Despite problems being reported in places like Arizona, I implore you all to get out, stay in line, and make sure you vote. If things go well for Republicans, I'm really looking forward to election denial and conspiracy theories to be cool again, because it's just different when they do it. But the corrupt press will always cover for it and spin it as different. We're already seeing that from both Democrats and the media floating their narratives for after a Democrat defeat, where they will call the election illegitimate. They'll say democracy is over which is really no different than denying election results. Democracy doesn't just die because your party loses the election. This is exactly why it is so infuriating, not just to me, but to millions of Americans, to sit and watch this paid panel of Democrat liars attempt to revise history in order to benefit Democrats and its stupid democracy is ending campaign message. How do you speak to that, Nick? Could you about the us versus we? Because it is very concerning. It, it is, I think, actually, it's right. It's not going to be a politician that, that saves us, for lack of a better word. It, it, one one politician didn't get us into this problem. One politician is not going to get us out. People ask me, how do you fix Washington? I'm like, Washington doesn't really lead. Washington reflects the nation. The reason Washington is so divided is that the country is. How do you fix that? It's a harder question, but don't look to Washington to fix this. Look to us to fix it. But when it comes to the election deniers, though, most that primarily is the Republican Party. And that, I think, has led to many problems. No. No. The sheer dripping condescension and outright partisanship from an institution, CBS News, that's supposed to be a check on power, not the PR propaganda machine for Democrats. She doesn't see that as a problem or a potential reason for the country's divisions. Look at trust in the media right now. The only people who trust it are Democrats. But no doubt they see this as a confirmation that they're the superior good people, while the rest of us are unwashed barbarians who are solely responsible for election denials. There's a 10 minute video showing Democrats denying election results and blaming conspiracies on my Twitter page right now that I suggest you check out when you're done here. When it comes to the election deniers though, most that primarily is the Republican Party. Right? Wrong. And that I think has led to many problems. No, that's that's not true. Look, I, January 6th is, is, is what it is. It was awful. It's terrible. That's, that's not, I'm not here to defend that. But right. Democrats have denied election results just as much as Republicans hands if you take January 6th out of the equation. Uh, yeah. that's, that's just factually not yeah. true. I mean, Excuse me. What? There are hundreds of Republican candidates on the ballot tonight yes. who have denied the outcome of the last election. Stacey There's nothing Abrams. like that on Stacey the Democratic Abrams side. Stacey Abrams still has to admit she lost last time she ran in, in Georgia. Look, again, this is the debate, right? Right, right. Why, why can't we all agree that everybody's a little bit at risk and a little bit at fault and we try and fix it as opposed to everybody saying, well, it's got to be a Republican fault and until they change, the country's not going yeah. to you see, but they can never do that because all they care about, all they're paid to do is protect the Democrat Party. None of them had anything to say after he pointed out Stacey Abrams' election denial. Who, Democrat donor Dale King, the lady who said election deniers are very concerning, is very fond of. And of course, that's not the end of it. I wish that Republicans or anyone who's going to go on the media and tackle this subject would be prepared to talk about all of it. I've done many, many videos on this topic, so I'm just going to go through it real quickly. Democrats denied the 2000 election results. The Black Caucus and some other Democrats tried to overturn it by decertifying Florida, which failed. They called Bush illegitimate and hundreds of Democrats rioted at Bush's inauguration. This was the first time in my lifetime that we saw both election denial and violence, and it was started by Democrats. Next, they did deny the 2000 2004 election and tried to overturn it, but admittedly in smaller numbers. Then in 2016, they were ready with a grand conspiracy to deny the election results, which incorporated FBI agents lying to FISA courts for spying and disseminating actual Russian disinformation, all in an attempt to undo the election results. There was also a large riot at Trump's inauguration that resulted in injured Secret Service agents, but somehow they didn't spread to the Capitol. Live pictures here from Washington. Obviously not everyone has come to welcome and bless the inauguration of uh, Donald Trump. Not exactly sure where in the capital this is taking place, but it looks like it is well away from the center, which is uh, heavily uh, fenced off for the uh, inauguration ceremony itself. Oh, right, because they use security to block off the capital. 
<laughs> I wonder why they didn't do that on January 6th. Lastly, again, the multi-year campaign by Democrats and their media to claim that democracy is over if Democrats don't win is just another way of denying election results. You're casting doubt on a system that would elect your opponents. Something that they say is dangerous if Republicans do it. All right, folks, get out there and vote after you hit the like button, share, subscribe, and make sure to leave a comment to let us all know what you think. Thanks a lot.